anyway, it is my pleasure now to move on to an award ceremony. Um, and I'm going to be giving the Voice of Reason Award to Art Robinson. Art Robinson is the reason many of us are in this room. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. Way back, 1997, 1998, when the Kyoto Protocol was first being proposed, Art Robinson was one of those pioneers who saw that the science had been hijacked by the left, that people were being lied to, and that real scientists all across the country, all across the world, were being ignored. That the fact that most scientists didn't believe that climate change was either man-made or was going to be a problem was being ignored and hidden by a small group of politically oriented scientists. So Dr. Robinson didn't just sit on the sidelines. He made a critical decision. He said, let's organize a petition that we can ask scientists to sign that says that we don't believe global warming is a crisis. And he hatched the petition project. It's a very short statement, and I'm going to read it to you in full. It says, we urge the United States government to reject the global warming agreement that was written in Kyoto, Japan in December 1997 and any other similar proposals. The proposed limits on greenhouse gases would harm the environment, hinder the advance of science and technology, and damage the health and welfare of mankind. There is no convincing scientific evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane, or other greenhouse gases is causing or will in the foreseeable future cause catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of Earth's climate. Moreover, there is substantial scientific evidence that increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide produce many beneficial effects upon the natural plant and animal environments of the Earth. Period. Signed by 31,000 scientists, over 9,000 of whom have PhDs. It's a brilliant thing, and it's so important in the debate to be able to say, look, the only petition that's been signed by that many scientists is adamant that the science is not in and that global warming is not a crisis, which is why the left demonizes that petition just relentlessly. If you go to the Wikipedia entry on it, uh, you'll see how they try to misrepresent it. So Dr. Robinson is a distinguished chemist. He's the co-founder of the Oregon Institute of Science and Medicine. He's the editor of Access to Energy, an outstanding uh, uh, newsletter on energy policy and environmental issues. He received a PhD in chemistry from the University of California in San Diego. I'll say quickly, the Oregon Institute of Science and Medicine, uh, founded in 1981, is a nonprofit research organization devoted to conducting basic and applied research in subjects immediately applicable to increasing the quality, quantity, and length of human life. Um, and one word about access to energy, go online, look it up, sign up for it, because it's a delightful thing to be able to read. Art says of his readers and his editorial philosophy, we don't ask them to trust and parrot us, we ask them to think, which I think is absolutely perfect. So to get the Voice of Reason Award, please come up here, Art Robinson. Thank you very much. You know, the greatest scientist who ever lived was Isaac Newton. And if you understand anything about his work, it's very hard to think of his work without almost having tears in your eyes. Newton, uh, and in Albert Einstein's terms, we can say Newton did this work. Einstein said he was privileged to do this work. But at the end of his life, this man, obviously our greatest scientist, said of himself this. He said, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself, I'm just like a small boy playing by the seashore, occasionally noticing a more beautiful pebble or shell while the great ocean of truth goes undiscovered before me. Now, those who have had an opportunity to live a life in the world of science that he and a very few others created have had the same experience. I've lived a life in biochemistry, and it's a wonderful life. Uh, every now and then you chip off some small thing that you can understand and do it, 
Every now and then you have an opportunity to do something that may be a little more general, but not one one hundredth of percent of what there is to know about biochemistry has been discovered today. It's the same as Isaac Newton's physics. And Roy Spencer's field, the same thing. Uh, he decided to spend a life in climate science, studying the atmosphere, the oceans, and so forth, and it's the same thing. And I understand the wonderful life that he has had in that. And I can also imagine what it must be like when he's happily enjoying this, and a whole gaggle of politicos roll up, dragging a bunch of obsolete hypotheses, and demand to turn off the world's energy supplies on the basis of claims about his field, while billions of people are trying to lift themselves from poverty and tyranny uh, using those energy supplies. So I, I figuratively imagine him standing there in his field watching, saying this thing and wondering if it's a mirage. It can't be true. This, this Al Gore and these, this, this nonsense is just beyond belief. At the same time, he, while he's confronting that, probably wondering what he should do about it, another group starts piling up behind him of fine scientists, but they're out of his field. They're out of his field of specialization, but they're all saying, it's okay, Roy, we've got your back. And he's in between this crowd. This crowd is lying and doesn't know what it's doing. This crowd wants to help. They're fine scientists, but they don't understand his field. <laughs> and then he looks over, and it's even worse on this side because some of them have got to writing thousands of letters to other scientists asking them to, to stand there too. <laughs> I don't know what he thought of this, but I, I thought I'd, this, this talk's somewhat of an apology to him, so he'll understand. What happened was that in uh, about the time of the Kyoto meeting, just before it, I got a call from Max Boot at the Wall Street Journal asking me to write the editorial they ran during the meeting, and I, uh, and I had to have it the next morning. So I called Sally Balunas and asked her to please keep me from making uh, some terrible error, and we got a credible editorial together and wrote it. But then uh, afterwards, uh, the people on the other side, this side, started being very uncharitable, making, telling quite a few lies about us, and that got our attention a little more. And I realized that these people had three strings to their bow. The first was that a consensus of all scientists already agreed with them, so they didn't have to discuss the science. The second was that they were on the white horses of uh, idealism, trying to save the planet. And the third was that anyone who opposed them was on the black horse of commercial self-interest, willing to destroy the planet for profit. It was a political problem, obviously, not a scientific problem. And I knew one thing, I knew their consensus wasn't true. Uh, so we thought that we would ask, you can't prove science by polling. It doesn't matter how many scientists sign up behind an idea. It has no merit with respect to whether the idea is true or false. But it uh, did have merit in this. So we decided we'd circulate that petition. But the first thing, we, first problem we had was we didn't know enough about the subject to write a, a review article on it. And if we didn't send the scientists a, a thorough review article about the subject, that they, they weren't going to sign. So we started a study. and. Uh, it, first time it was a group of us uh, doing it, the second time Noah and I and our colleagues. And we had one tremendous uh, benefit, we had Willie Soon. Willie Soon, I mentioned before, uh, a couple days ago, was, is an American uh, wild card. But he also is a certified genius. Willie, uh, if you ask him a question about this subject, uh, there's a little blur and suddenly sitting in front of you is a pile of all the research papers pro and con on the subject, everything you might need to know about it, and then you're reading for a, a few weeks, and then you ask him another question. So he helped us tremendously, and over a period of many months, we, reached, we wrote, thought about it until we reached the conclusion that we knew enough to write a review article, and we did, and then with the help of Fred Seitz and many colleagues, Jane Orient, uh, Jeremy Snavely, all kinds of people, many people in this room, and including the readers of Access to Energy who supplied the money, we started circulating that petition. And it grew to about 17,000, and the second time to 31,000, and uh, it would have been a lot larger. We just ran out of stamps. <laughs> the, uh, uh, and, and it was done by a, a first-class male handshake with uh, each scientist at his uh, known address. 
There was one bogus name on it, uh, Ozone Action, which eventually became Greenpeace USA, uh, basically uh, uh, forged one of these things and sent it in. And as soon as we found out about it, as soon as they started bragging, we took it off. And there were no others. There never has been another. They got much more active in the second time we circulated it, trying to put on bogus names. But Jeremy Snavely ran a project to vet every name very carefully, and it prevented it. Uh, Mickey Mouse is not on there. Donald Duck is not on there, all these claims. Uh, Perry Mason is on there because he's a PhD chemist that lives in Lubbock, Texas. And, and the, uh, if you have 31,000 names, of course, you can find some that are common. And I think it's, it has proved useful, not in saying anything about the science of this subject, only in proving that they do not have a consensus. And that's their only protection, because they don't have an argument either. Uh, watching Al Gore's movie is, is, is sort of painful. Uh, you know, you remember the best thing, well, there were, I, I probably shouldn't talk all about that, it's all kinds of things, but one of my favorite things, he walks across this tremendous stage showing the last 600,000 years of the CO2 going up and down, the temperature going up and down, and he stops and he says, and you see, when the CO2 goes up, it gets warmer. What he doesn't tell you is the vapor pressure of CO2 over seawater is temperature dependent, and they have to go up and go down together, and if the data didn't look that way, we'd know the data was wrong, because it's thermodynamically impossible for them not to go up and down together. Anyway, uh, the lies, the, the, the sea of lies has been incredible, and uh, we've uh, uh, tried to be of help. In a general sense, uh, we're a micro this fight is a microcosm of a much broader thing that you know is going on in our country. Uh, we are on a democratic playing field trying to save a constitutional republic. And these people are just one element of what's coming at the people of the United States. Our founders, uh, knew that democracy failed. All democracies in history have failed. They've all result, uh, devolved to mob rule. And so they didn't give us one. They gave us a constitutional republic. But now too many people have taught us, or taught our people, that if 51% of us vote away the property of our neighbors, uh, then that's OK. And that's wrong. And is inconsistent with our republic. No one knows whether we'll be successful this time. We have new tools. We can communicate with each other. We have the internet, where now the truth and the lie can stand in competition, whereas before, if you, as Mark Twain said, never get in a fight with anybody who buys his ink by the barrel. And it used to be that if you bought your ink by the barrel, you could tell a lie and conceal the truth. That can't be done anymore. We live in a different world, a highly technological world, and maybe we'll be the exception. Maybe we can save our constitutional republic. But that's a battle that all of us are in, and this is just one element of it. If they can take something as rigorous as science, something as beautiful as Isaac Newton created, and pervert it to the point where it can cause us to cause the deaths of billions of people by withdrawing their energy supplies, then we have failed. They've already stopped our nuclear energy, now they want to stop our hydrocarbon energy. It's unbelievable. And all of us are in that fight. Uh, uh, we haven't done, I don't think, we've worked hard in our own science. We've never made any discovery in climate science, but we wind up these two groups that Roy Spencer had to deal with. Now, this group is getting bigger and bigger and more alarmed and more alarmed, and they are more and more educating themselves about his field of specialization, and I hope they're helping. But uh, that's, that's where we are, and uh, this is a battle we must win. And if the more you get into it, the more you are lied about, and you get kind of used to that, and you understand what, what, what these people are. Uh, so uh, that, that's about all I, I, I have to say about it. The petition proved that there was no consensus, and events later proved more that there's no consensus. The review article we managed to write after years, after many months of study is, is mostly correct, but there are many new things that can be said about it. And in this field of specialization of his, uh, long, before, long after he and I and everybody in this room is gone, they'll still probably be able to say that they haven't learned more than 1% about the subject. But it is possible in science to negate a false hypothesis. And they have negated all the false hypotheses that are driving the human cause global warming 
uh, uh, politics. So it, it's uh, a privilege. I hope we helped. I'm sure I'd not, uh, not enjoy every thought he must have had when he saw what was happening in this, but I hope we've helped. And, uh, and mainly, all of us, we have to help our country because we're in terrible trouble. And the world depends upon us because if our example disappears, uh, we could move uh, for a thousand years into another dark age. So this is a battle we're all in, whether we like it or not.